story. I'd love to tell it to Eliana also one day about David and Goliath and the Goliath that she's going to slay in life because of Jesus. You know, all of these kind of things. But but David understood something about the heart of God. The word says, in the, and this is, I mean, this is in the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, right? And it says that, that David was a man who was after God's heart. God meant everything to David. God, uh, to, God, um, to David, God was his inheritance. It, he, God was his treasure. It was his 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 privilege. It was he, he was so honored to be able to to have God within his life. And he writes these words. He says, verse one. This is the NIV translation. It says, "The Lord." Key word over there. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Notice King David never said that his skill set is his light and his salvation. He never said that his savings account is his light and his salvation, though he was a very wealthy man. He never said that his education, though he was very educated, he, he never said that his education was his light and his salvation and so forth. But he understood something about the heart of God, that God was the light inside of his life. And because God was the light inside of his life, what could happen? He no longer needed to fear. He no longer needed to operate from a place of fear. Though fear came at him, he wasn't controlled by that fear. Right? And we see a great example of, of, of this in a way greater level in the New Testament with the Lord Jesus Christ. Where so often again, he's walking with these 12 guys whom he's chosen to be his disciples, his students, the people that are learning from him, the very people that are going to be the, 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 the pillars, the, the side pillars of his church, of his organization, of his company, if I could use that word, of his global family that's going to initiate change into the world. The very change that God the Father had predestined for all humanity to walk in. Right, And you see Jesus walking with these 12 guys, Jesus himself not being overcome by fear, but he sees his disciples getting overcome by fear. And he says something to them very interesting. He says, oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And I don't believe his tone of voice was like, oh, you little, you know, you of little faith. You guys are absolutely terrible individuals, terrible disciples and followers. Can you guys just man up and come on, get some more faith? No, I believe it was from a real genuine place saying, oh, you of little faith. You know, maybe in other words, don't you understand how much you are loved? Don't you see how much you are loved? Because I've taken you out of this. There's a track record of, of my deliverance over your life. And yet you still are doubting. Oh, you of little faith, why are you doubting? Don't you understand that I love you, that I care for you, that I'm able to make a way for you?